Although we are active church of Satan members, we do not speak on their behalf. The following contains language of an adult man and poorly impersonated celebrity voices. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, this is Warlock Storm Anderson, and you're listening to The Devil You Know. On this episode, you can't see my pumpkin, but you might hear about it. Here we are, episode nine. Yes. What's up, John? Nueve. Um, I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy uh, we're still going. I was hoping to make it to episode nine. Now I can die. Well, hopefully we keep making a, you know, a few more episodes even. Yeah. The f- they say the first 50 are the hardest. Dude. What? Dude, are you seriously? We, we've been on for oh. 30 seconds. All right, let me answer it. 30 seconds, out. really? Hold on. I know, right? Not even. Devil you know podcast, how can I help you? Hello, gentlemen. It's Reverend Campbell. Oh, hey. We were uh, wondering. Uh, right off the um, bat, man. How do you know when we're recording, by the way? Yeah, that's weird. I. It's the owl. Look. <laughs> I just want... Skype. Can I Can I just be honest with you guys for a second? I, I feel really terrible about how things happened uh, last week that we talked. Um, I, I wanted... I, this is not easy for me. I want to say I'm sorry. I I shouldn't have spoken to either of you the way I did, and I think you guys deserve an explanation about what's been going on. That sounds uh, okay. that sounds great. That sounds really great. Um, <clears throat> let me start by saying I I really don't appreciate if we're being open and honest that you guys play those tapes after I asked you not to. Um, you did did you hear this? I didn't hear that. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure you Talking about a Pandora's, Pantera's box or something, I think it was. Oh. All right. It's, it's, it's funny for you guys because you're doing a show and it's a whole big thing, but it, this is my life, so. All right. Um, I apologize on behalf friend. of Dorian. Tell us, tell us yeah, you just yeah, let yeah, it out. Tell, you let tell. it out. We love you, man. All right, look. The, I, I, the, the first episode, it, there's a promo that you guys ran, and it was Christopher Walken um, sort of talking to you guys about your podcast. And I sort of heard it, and something sort of clicked in my head, and I was a little bothered, and I didn't think it would be anything more than just a, an early promo for your podcast. And then your first episode aired, and I respect both of you as individuals and as Satanists, and so I was a little taken aback that you had Christopher Walken on, and... Uh, after I heard that he had wanted to get in to learn a little bit more about Satanism, I, I just look. I, I've never told anyone this before, and and I feel like I know you two well enough that I could be open with you and, and tell you this. But I, I, I need you to be a little bit sensitive about it because it's really, it's it's. I, I feel very vulnerable talking about it. Christopher Walken is my dad. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, right. Come on, dude. Come on. No, dude. <laughs> no, I I wish I was fucking kidding. He's never acknowledged right, right. it. Christopher no, but, Walken. Yeah, the... The, the like Christopher the Walken of your son is your father. That's yeah. crazy. That, and that, look, okay, look, look. The year was 1976. Christopher Walken was on his way to film a cameo in a Kojak episode in New York City. He was traveling through Chicago. My mom happened to work at a barbecue joint in the airport. Oh my God, is that, is that who I think it is? Is that, is that Christopher Walken? Holy shit. This could be my ticket out of here. I gotta go over there and talk to him. Hello, waitress, Thai person. How are you? Great. Hi, hi. Are you Christopher Walken? I am. Him. Oh my god, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's nice to meet me too. I, I was kind of wondering if um, maybe we can get together. My shift's almost over. I have a plane to catch. I don't think it's possible. I, I think maybe you want to take me along. To where? I, I, wherever you're going. 
on your trip to Hollywood. I'm going to, to Vietnam. I have a, a film to, to film there. We're going to do with something called The Deer Hunter. I, I would love to go with you anywhere. Anywhere? That sounds intriguing. Root beer is not what I ordered. It's, it's not my thing. Well, I, I can get you anything you want. Pineapple. I'm slowly getting into pineapple lately. It's, it's good. Do you have any pineapple juice? Oh, you bet I do. <laughs> I will get that to you right away. Sounds, sounds good. You know, I have some time. If you want, we can slip into a closet. A, a closet? <laughs> uh, okay. I I'm down for anything. Nice. Me too. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go right now. I'm ready. Now? I can't. My eggs are here and they're cold. Oh, fuck your eggs. Let's go. Alright. Sounds like a plan. Mmm, ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's great. Right there. Mmm, -hmm. ah. Ooh. Yeah. Like, yeah. Stick your finger in my ass. Yeah. Oh, oh. It, is that a is that a watch? Do I feel a Never watch mind. in your ass? I'm prepared for a, a movie. Just just leave it there. Oh, you're kinky. Mm. I know. I'm Chris. Wow. That, what? The, I, I just don't even know what to say. What Holy a story. Shit. That uh. Like, well, the reality is, is he's never acknowledged it. She has repeatedly tried to reach out to him and tell him that he has a son. He, he's, he's refused to accept me. And so you can understand my frustration and even a little bit of rage when I find the man who's refused my existence, refused my blood, is it, suddenly a part of something that I find so, is something that's such a large part of my life. Uh, Satanism and the Church of Satan, and I cannot have a piece of shit like that, a part of something that is so important to me. I, it wasn't my best. I shouldn't have. I, I can see now. I shouldn't have done what I did, and I, I am truly sorry for it. But I, I mean, can't accept. What do we got to do to? Yeah, what do we got to do to to move move this forward to you know help you get over the hump? Yeah. I'm not entirely sure this is the format or the place to do that. I just wanted to explain myself. I, I appreciate your guys' time. I thank you for your friendship. And I hope that this just maybe you understand a little bit of what I was, what I was the madness that I was experiencing and, and the, the shit that I've been dealing with. Uh, since birth, I, yeah. I, I'm sorry to well, put this, it all on your show. I don't mean that's to fine. That's fine because a lot of our listeners were wondering themselves, and this really puts it into perspective. I mean, it's really it makes a lot of sense now, and uh, um, I feel for you, man. Um, yeah, we yeah. can't blame you for being upset with him, definitely. Yeah, yeah, we didn't trip. It wasn't I, even not even a need to apologize to us. We we didn't trip. You know what I mean? As they say, as the kids say I nowadays. Yeah. I appreciate you guys' understanding, and you know, I don't don't treat him any differently. Just whatever you guys want to do, I just I wanted you to know. And anyway, I, I gotta head out, so have a good night, guys. All right, we'll talk to you soon. All right, take All care. Right. Man. Oh, I don't know, <laughs> John. We gotta do something about that. Oh, I'm just uh, what a story. Did you? I mean, it makes sense though. I, we, we we can't. We get now. We gotta talk to Chris because. I don't know. Next week we got to get a hold of Chris and go. Hey, why are you ignoring your son? Oh shit. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Our listeners are demanding it at this point. They're outside my door with pitchforks and torches and shit. Right well, next on. week we'll, we'll get that solved. All right, John. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on it. Yeah. And now you're drunk. John, I gotta say, the last three episodes have been great, but it's starting to turn into a bit of a sausage fest here, so uh, we need to liven things up. Who we got this week? 
We have Church of Satan Witch Marilyn Mansfield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, dear. Hello. <laughs> How goes it? It goes good. <laughs> yeah. How are you, gentlemen? Doing a, a moderately keno. Actually. <laughs> How about you, Dory? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Having a good time already. So. Well, we're, we're really glad to have you here. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, you were one of the first people that that uh, John and I talked about having on here and um you keep saying that every week dude they're catching yeah on. yeah no goodness <laughs> I gotta I gotta come up with something better <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so well, am I the first people? Am I the first female interview? Yes. Yeah. Ah. Actually. Yeah. Oh, nice. so I was saying, yeah, we had to. It, it was starting to feel like a bit of a sausage fest in here. So, yeah, we had to, we had to change things. I don't want a sausage stuff. fest. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, this week for episode nine, our interview is with a special friend who John and I have both worked with. Yes. John, who do we have this week? We have your friend and mine, Corvus Nocturnum, otherwise known as Reverend Eric Vernor of the Church of Satan. All right. How's it going, sir? Oh. <laughs> it, it's going great. Thank you, guys. It's a, a pleasure to be speaking to you again. And, uh, um, I, I've been wanting to chat with you guys since last May. Excellent. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's kind of hard to to find time for all of us. We're all, always doing. All of us are all doing so many different things. That, you know, it's crazy. But uh, glad yeah. to have you on here. Yeah. Like I gotta say, you guys. Uh, before we get into stuff, the artwork logo for the devil you know is impressive. Oh, awesome! That's all, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool. So, uh, how you been? What you been up to lately? Uh, I've been incredibly busy. Um, uh, I don't think I've taken much of a break except for a couple weeks ago when I got hit really hard being sick and my body just pretty much said, oh, no, you're taking a break for the last two years all at once. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I thought that just publishing and being an artist uh, was enough for me, but... Uh, my inspiration and my brain won't let me slow down at all and other projects other people come into my life and uh it just kind of goes in, in crazy new directions uh there's several uh paranormal horror conventions that are using me as a consultant uh in different parts of the country now because of my experience in the last decade going around um you know i've, I've got a shoebox full of business cards from people that i've collected over the years and they're like, well, you know, hey, can you get so and so? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Uh, so I I started to do this on the side uh, to help them out for next year, you know, because I want to see the conventions get bigger because then more fans show up and then I can sell more of my stuff and have more people hear me talk. Um, right. So it, it's a win for both sides and their convention grows bigger. So, um, 
you know that that that's one of the many things that has been simmering on the back burner there's uh the television show i'm still working on there's the documentary with mr shaw um, I don't know if we can say too much about that publicly. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> the following has been removed because it is on a need-to-know basis, and right now, you do not need to know. Thank you. Um, you know, there's another documentary I'm halfway into right now. It's based off my book, uh, Vampire Evolution, uh, where I'm actually talking about ancient history of vampires all the way up to modern day, and we'll be putting it on DVD. I'll be pitching it to History Channel to see if they want to take it from me. Oh, nice. Uh, that just kind of nice. came up out of nowhere. It was extra footage from the TV series that we decided to separate. But since I had already shot half of it, I didn't want it to you know, go in the proverbial trash can. So yeah. I started asking professors and writers and people in the living vampire community to you know, send me footage of them talking so I didn't have to travel all over and get them, you know, myself. So it's kind mm -hmm. of, has a very raw feel to it. Uh, so I'm hoping that the networks in, enjoy it because it brings it up into the, um, you know, modern technology of cell phones and Skype calls and yeah. things like that. So, you know, they, they may be stuck in a rut and say, no, we want it all professional and they don't want it. But, you know, I still have the option of putting it straight to DVD myself. Oh, good. So, so I just guess then the question yeah. is really is when do you sleep? The, well, my roommates will tell you never because they walk into the room when they get off work at various times or one of them comes in <laughs> off the road uh, you know, from being a truck driver gone for three weeks and they'll stop into my office uh, slash bedroom and they'll be you know watching me at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and falling asleep at the computer. So um, eating and sleeping is a luxury, and I think that's why my body just said, you know, you're taking a break. Uh, yeah. last week. Right, yeah. but, you're not allergic to garlic, are you? No, no. I'm okay. actually I'm, I'm fond of uh, all kinds of things. Just so. trying to figure you out. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> how about sunlight? No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, sunlight actually does bother me because <laughs> indoors so much. Uh, yeah. My vision's sensitive to it. You know, I, I go out mostly at night shopping, you know, not liking the herd mentality, uh, I, I shop online or late at night to avoid as many people as possible. And then I, that, that switch just gets flipped, you know, when I have to do the convention circuit. Yeah. And then I'm on the road for four months solid meeting, you know, hundreds of people every weekend. And, you know, then you kind of want to crawl back into, you know, the dark place when you get home after all that. Like, no, no, I'm, pe I'm peopled out. Yeah. <laughs> Pull the lid down on the coffin, right? Yeah. Yeah, you got to. You got to recharge, and it actually takes a, a few days to get back into checking email, getting back to people on Facebook, uh, getting orders of books out, and you know, now I'm throwing myself back into catching up art commissions and books that uh, people are wanting me to have finished before the end of the year. So yeah, I've, I've got two books to try to pound out in the next four weeks. Wow. Um, you mentioned earlier, um, just for our listeners so they know, what, uh, TV show. What is the name of the TV show? Uh, its title is Eerie America, Travel Guide of the Macabre. And if you go on either my website, CorvusNocturnum.com, it's on the front page there. Also, the teaser clip for uh, the vampire documentary, I put both of those up on it tonight. Um, it, it, on YouTube, if you're just wanting to go on YouTube, it's Eerie America, The Journey Begins, and you can see highlights of the first four episodes there. Um, Excellent. Wow. We, still, we still have another three episodes to film sometime this next year before we can put it into post-production and then you know, start pitching it everywhere. Great, right. great. Looking forward to that. Um, yeah, for people that aren't that familiar and you know, uh, don't want to click the buttons on their computer... <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's we wanted to call it the Adams Family Guide, and that gives you a, a broader idea. That's actually how we're pitching it to networks right now. It's like you know, there's three or four people that are kind of strange and unusual, with a couple normal people thrown in, just to try to show that anybody could go to these places. And yeah. it's uh, it's unusual, creepy places that are fun, family friendly. Well, most of them are. Um, of where to eat at, sleep at, shop at that isn't your normal, everyday, boring vacation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Well, 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 you know, I mean, if the you know that the people are too lazy to click the buttons to check it out, then they're probably not listening to us anyway. But that's, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, because you have to click like two buttons so, to listen to the show. So. Yeah. 
Right. That's too. That's too too many. So uh, now, obviously, we're we're kind of, of course, jumping into you know a, a dozen things here. Um, maybe we should kind of focus on one section at a time. Uh, the first thing that I think that most of us probably know you from is, is publishing and writing. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how, you, how you got into that and were well, your first books and so forth? I kind of became an author and later, you know, shortly after publisher by uh, circumstance, just like everything else pretty much in my life in the last 12 years. Uh, I was helping run a occult pagan shop and... So many people were coming in and really upsetting me because they'd be like, oh, well, these witches, are they devil worshippers? And, you know, I got tired of explaining it again and again. And I thought, okay, I'm going to gather people from every walk of life that I possibly can, from death metal to the Church of Satan and, you know, everything of that ilk and explain the history uh, of where it all came from, what the differences were, why there were some similarities and confusion uh, and interview people that, you know, get it straight from the horse's mouth, you know, and that's how I encountered uh, the Church of Satan initially, and I enjoyed so much of what I found out in talking to uh, High Priest Gilmore that I just decided to send in, you know, for membership then, and, um, you know, the rest uh, was history as far as that goes, but last May, uh, I expanded the book, Embracing the Darkness, Understanding Dark Subcultures, and added an additional 80-some pages to it. I interviewed some of the old people again and put in, put in some new stuff as well. Uh, right. I, I actually got uh, 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 Gavin Badley, uh, one of the other uh, Church of Satan members, to do an afterword for me. So I was really proud of that because, to be honest, one of the things that inspired me to be an author in the first place was uh, Gavin's uh, Lucifer Rising and Goth Chic. Um, I really liked his academic yet easy to read um, works uh, through Plexus Publishing, and it, it just sort of took off from there. When I wrote the first one, to where I, I instantly did not want to be pigeonholed specifically in oh this guy only writes about such and such. So <clears throat> I, I didn't want to lose my fans and go totally uh, out there. So I, I stuck in the dark genres, but I, mean, I worked very hard since then to keep jumping from one interesting topic to another, like zombies, then vampires, uh, old creepy asylums. I'm working on one on the history of werewolves right now. Um, you know, I did one on the history of the archetype and origins of the devil, uh, you know, because I wanted people to realize, you know, all these different, you know, things are out there. And I didn't want people to say, oh, he only writes about vampires, or he's only a Church of Satan member, and... You know, there's so much more to all of us than just who our affiliation happens to be. Right. I've read a. I've got. I have a lot of your books. I've read a lot of them. Great stuff. Um, I'm just wondering. I haven't seen any yeah. illustrations by Dorian Gray in there. And why is that? <laughs> well, honestly, that's because uh, Dorian and I had friends until the last year or so. Um, <laughs> But uh, that, that's definitely a possibility. You know, maybe some cover designs from both of you guys. Oh yeah, that'd be great. That's yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> so you did the very the, cool. You do. We, I mean, we see a lot of stuff on online uh, with the artistry. What? How did you get into um, painting, and how did you know that that was something that you, uh, you know, would, would interest you and you were good at? Um, I never really thought I was good at it in, until my roommate uh, looked at me. I had made an offhand comment probably about fifteen years ago. And I said, you know, one of these days I want to paint stuff like uh, Frank Frazanetta Fris or, uh, you know, Boris Vallejo, Brahm, stuff like that. And I said, one nice, of, yeah. you know, one of these days I'm going to do that. And she looked at me and said, if you always say someday I'll do that, then you'll never do it. Because you're always going to second guess yourself, be your own worst critic, and then you'll just say I'm not good enough yet. So I just threw myself into it and slowly I kept improving um, as far as. Uh, the dark gothic and erotic you know, fantasy work that I'm known for now, mostly. Um, but prior to that, you know, my my earlier dabblings in in art was at a very young age, probably five or six years old. I was scribbling on the backs of my grandfather's depositions. He was a lawyer, 
and I would be scribbling monsters in crayon and stuff. And, you know, my parents uh, were heavy into the arts and music of, you know, since they were flower children of the 70s. Uh, you know, my family encouraged me being an artist. Um, I, I learned a lot from books. I learned how to do landscaping techniques from, you know, Bob Ross. And, you know, I went from painting the happy little bushes and trees of his paint some happy trees. Yeah, and then I started, you know, browsing Playboy and Penthouse and doing figure studies from them. So I was merging the two together to have some really interesting, okay, I'm going to take this uh, Playmate of the Month with uh, some forest scene in the background and then add some gothic fantasy elements to it and bang. You know, then there you have it. Uh, for the last about 20 years, I've been um, getting my name out there as an artist. But I, I truly think that if I hadn't become... <laughs> An author first, uh, as far as the public's view, my art wouldn't have been seen that much because I only did um, some local stuff, a couple art shows, uh, a gallery in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Then somebody came into the old shop and they saw my work and they're like, well, we own a BDSM club, so we want you to paint a mural in the place. And, you know, that paid pretty well. Um, but I, I wasn't known everywhere until I became an author. And then I've got people writing to me now saying, I've read all your books. I didn't know you did art too. You know, so right. I say half of my living is off, off of art and the other half is books and speaking fees. I never thought that I would hear anybody say I've mixed Playboy and Bob Ross together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get people kind of giving me this weird cross-eyed look when I say that it's like <laughs> happy little bush and then a uh, happy little bush. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, I was at the the Hall Gallery last night, and your painting was right when you walk in the in the door. It was right there on the first wall. So wow, thank you. I mean, I wanted to go down there to it myself and see everybody again, but because of catching up work from the convention circuit, I just couldn't make it down there. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. <clears throat> but John got to see that in person when he came to my house. Oh yeah, that was a that's a really good one. Okay, so. You've got the book thing. You've got the painting thing. Um, now you're doing a TV show called Eerie America. Where did that come from? Where did, um, you know, how did that originate? And uh, how's uh, that going? <laughs> that, that one came from a book that I co-wrote with uh, my now executive producer friend, Kevin Eads. He does a lot of uh, horror fiction through my company, but he's always been a, uh, very interested in true crime, uh, being a law professor, and uh, he loves the classics like Hammer horror films. So, you know, we started talking uh, when I was a student of his uh, in college, and we hit it off right away because he made an Elizabeth Bathory joke in class, and I was the only one that really laughed at it. <laughs> and so after that, he told me he had screenplays and, and fiction. He had heard about me doing... Um, you know, the publishing thing, because I was rather infamous in college uh, at the time. So, you know, we started working together. Um, some of the older members of the Church of Satan may recall uh, in Philadelphia some years ago, I think around five or six years back maybe, uh, there was an art gallery um, that the Church of Satan curated back then. And when I was killing time uh, after displaying my work there, you know, we set it up and I was waiting for the public and everything. I happened to notice that the uh, East State Penitentiary, uh, you know, was just packed with people trying to get in around the holidays uh, or closer, you know, Halloween. And since I couldn't get in there at the time, well, we decided to go down to the Mütter Museum. And I was wandering through that place, and it's a college physician's, and it has some freak-type stuff in it, the world's largest, you know, human skull collection, things like that. And somebody that was wandering by happened to mention, hey, this is cool, it kind of reminds me of the Edgar Allan Poe Museum. And I was going, wow, you know, there's all these cool places out there. So when I went back to, you know, college uh, the next week, I told Kevin about it, and I'm like, there's got to be more out there. And he said, oh, yeah, when I was young, I used to travel with my family a lot. And he told me about the UFO Museum in Roswell. We just started clicking ideas together, and we decided to write the book, uh, Erie America, Travel Guide to the Macabre. And that was just cool places to go to. It, it wasn't until we decided uh, another year later 
uh, one of the places that I had called for photos was the Witch Museum in Salem, and they were like, um, when's your crew going to come out? And, and I'm like, what, my what? I, just, I was calling for photos, you know, for publicity uh, of uh, places around Salem that were really cool. And they thought I was talking about, you know, bringing a TV crew. And I was like, oh, okay. So I called Kevin up. And I was all excited. And I said, what do you think about turning our book into a TV show? So, you know, we started adding other elements to it, like places to stay at and shop at that had an equally cool, creepy feel, you know. Yeah. The Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast. And it was the mm-hmm. actual house where the murder took place. You know, so it just kind of grew from there. We added extra cast members. We're bringing in post-production people to help polish the footage that we shot down in uh, the French Quarter in New Orleans. So the, the the witchcraft shop that you were talking about in Salem, was that Crow Haven Corner? Um, no, we actually went to uh, Five Hands Curiosity Shop. And it, it's kind of like the, the place in New York City called... Uh, uh, oddities or maybe oddities is the name of the show on uh, uh, Discovery Channel right so now you have a documentary that you're working on as well <coughs> yeah I'm working on uh, one on vampires from ancient folklore all the way up to modern day interest and you know we, we've got me voicing over and narrating with uh, vampire author Michelle Bellinger uh, we've yeah, got yeah. Uh, we've got several authors and uh, experts, scholars, you know, coming in, giving their opinions and reflections. Uh, you know, a lot of artwork and classic woodcuts, stuff like that. Huh. Excellent. Looking forward to that. All right. So we've touched on the the present, a little bit of the past, but let's let's go back even farther. Um, your childhood. How were you brought up? What were your parents like? Were they very religious? <coughs> Uh, my family pretty much was uh, Protestant, but open-minded. Um, my grandmother, for, uh, for instance, would say, I don't need the pastor telling me how to read the book. I can do it myself, so we stopped going to church. <laughs> um, you know, I think she was the early rebel of the family. She wasn't real thrilled later in life when she found out what I was studying more, but it, it just kind of went further from me being interested in all the various things that I'd read about, and people that I'd met, uh, different religions that I had tried to study, and none of them quite seemed to fit a- as permanently in my mind until someone handed me the Satanic Bible and said, hey, this is more like you because you like Nietzsche and you know other philosophers, and you're mm-hmm. more questioning and skeptic. So you know, from then on, I just kind of kept getting deeper and deeper into Anton LaVey's works and you know, that helped lead into, um, you know, embracing the darkness where I wanted to learn more about everything I was into, uh, as well as letting people speak for themselves. Um, basically, my family was uh, Protestant, uh, general Christian, uh, more spiritual than anything. Uh, and for the most part, the few members that were still alive were okay with it. They were, uh, I guess you could say, they were so used to me being different and weird anyway, and they didn't quite understand what it was. Uh, I mean, my uncle's got a copy of a lot of the books I've written, but I think he just bought them to support me, and I don't think he's bothered to read uh, a good share of what's in there. I mean, that's the way family is sometimes. <laughs> Point to the book on the shelf when company comes over. Um, you know, he'll he'll hedge at certain things, like around the holidays. And he'll be like, well, I, I know you don't uh, believe in things like I do, you know, and kind of trail off there, and It'd be like, what are you doing over Christmas? I'll be like, I like presents too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how about um, in, in school uh, and, and stuff with friends growing up the day? Um, <coughs> know about your, as you put it, your, your weirdness? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I was uh, I was very much the outcast. I was the subject of you know, being bullied. Um, being beat up uh, in middle school is what later prompted me to um, love comic books and, and vigilantes and you know things like that. Yeah, I, I I really appreciated the Punisher and Batman and you know the Dark Avenger types. Nice. You know it got me into shooting guns when I got older, and by that time everybody left me alone. So you know I just <laughs> had a nice gun collection. <laughs> it tends to happen, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, now I do it for stress relief and carry for self-defense, but, you know, that's kind of one of the things that you need to think about when you're not only traveling a lot in general society, but when you're uh, I guess you could say reaching a certain status in the public mind because I go to so many things and I'm expected to, you know, show up and present. Not everybody in the audience is necessarily going to like what you have to say, uh, or you have radical other religions out there that may just, you know, pop in and do something incredibly stupid. Yeah. You know, you know ah. like at a rock concert in Paris or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if that's how they are with other Christians, how would they, you know, handle someone like us? So, you know, uh, I've got friends in law enforcement and things like that. So I try to uh, have security with me uh, at a lot of the places that I go to that are in the crowd, you know, just to be careful. Yeah, definitely. So uh, as far as discovering Satanism, did that come from, uh, like you were saying earlier, about just uh, finding the different subgroups in occultism? Yeah, uh, I was in a, a rather eclectic group of friends who were studying everything from uh, Native American spirituality. I have that in my background, being part Cherokee, so you know it was of interest to me. Uh, then I, I had people that were into witchcraft and, and what's called, uh, you know, the the shadow side of of the occult. You know, um, I, I studied Santino's. Uh, you know, nocturnal witchcraft, and I kind of like the the darker feel and trappings of his work, um, but you know, it wasn't quite exactly what I was looking for. But uh, I really resonated with the uh, more uh, questioning, skeptic, uh, objectivism uh, that I encountered in LeVay's writings, and you know, it just uh, like so many of us, it, it rang true to how I felt about society and uh, life in general. Um, that I, I just uh, kind of threw myself that forward. Awesome, awesome. So you're very familiar with uh, the the one and only organization that uh, can and ever can uh, represent Satanism. It's called the Church of Satan. Um, when did? <laughs> how old were you when you um, first joined, and what and what sparked that? Uh, I, I think joining was me reaching the decision after I wrote my first book where I, I knew I could be a Satanist without joining, but at the same time I wanted to support the organization and keep it going. Uh, and the connections I made and the friends that I've made uh, since then, um, it would have been, I think, 2006, uh, if memory serves me correct. Um, you know, I, I've encountered a lot of members, uh, both online and in person since then, uh, a lot of good business and creative uh, networking. And I, I think that's one of the things that uh, has become extra special for me is obviously you're not going to get along or like everybody, but at the same time, you know, we're all polite and cordial to each other. And a lot of other organizations don't have that luxury. <clears throat> but if you do find that you work well with certain people, you know, you uh, brainstorm ideas and more creative endeavors come out from it. And, you know, uh, I could mention multiple ones that are either in the works or have already been done. Oh, yeah. Uh, but you right. gentlemen have already worked with me on a few things, and there's more, you know, potentially down the road as well. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Absolutely. Awesome. That's what it's all about. <coughs> Finding the cool ones, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're finding the cool ones. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking for a few outstanding a cool people. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Well, you are what, a busy guy. You are yeah, very yeah. interesting, but very uh, busy. I've got uh, over a dozen speaking engagements already for next year. Uh, the Left Hand Jeez. Path conference uh, in Atlanta is one that I'm both looking forward to and dreading at the same time because uh, uh, I did encounter some hecklers last year at the, the second annual Left Hand Path Con. Um, but it, it does give me a chance to actually see the people and hear their uh, personal commentary on what they think Satanism is, even if they're not members. And it, it helps me in a way mm. to 
verify in other interviews, you know, the differences between us and uh, the pseudo Satanists. Uh, because is that I, who was heckling you? Was pseudos? Yeah. yeah, one of them was, and one of them was actually a former ousted member of our organization. It he seems was, to be the case, isn't that strange? And, and yet, it was someone who. <laughs> It had been booted from the order long before I was even born. And I'm going, why are you bringing up things I have no clue about? You know, <laughs> uh, you know. so it, it, it kind of floored me. And, of course, the person holding the venue was very apologetic and offered to cover all of my expenses for the next year if I would be willing to come out and overlook uh, the outbursts in the crowd. And I said, well, sure. Um, you know, because I, I did well financially. Uh, what I did last year, but you know, um, meeting the general public that came in and getting to speak uh, on the behalf of the real Church of Satan versus everybody else, I think it was important for one of us to make a presence there. And uh, Megas Gilmore actually mentioned it to me on several occasions that uh, he had no problem with me going out again next year and doing it. Uh, that he was actually happy that one of us would, you know be there to counter all the rest yeah right yeah. now i've been to a lot of comedian shows i hear hecklers and things like that are, is it the same sort of thing do they they're just drunk assholes or like what, like what are some of the things that a heckler would say when a satanist is presenting something oh you know it's the tired and and worn out uh commentary that you find online of oh since levey died the church doesn't do anything anymore and we had to form our organizations to keep things going and i'm like <laughs> I'm standing here speaking in front of you and have done several major projects uh, that involve the, the current uh, administration, so I'm not quite sure how you get that information. You know, these people, right. it's funny, they don't realize that uh, the, the organization isn't supposed to do anything for you. Yeah. You know, that the, yeah. the organization is made a up broken of record. Oh, it, it is. It's funny. It, but they don't understand it's that. They, they're, not, they're not finding something that they're lacking, so they look, they look for it in an organization to provide it to them and right. it's right. quite funny you know when i was interviewed on another person's radio show a couple weeks ago uh i made a, a a comment on that and i said we are not a social you know advocacy group we're not out there trying to save the world satanism is about saving yourself as an individual becoming the best a person that you possibly can be. It's more about what you can get out of it for yourself and become better. Uh, there's no need to try to, you know, rally the saber for any other cause because uh, we're not that altruistic, to be honest. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, the, as far as I understand, Levey wasn't about saving the world. He's like, I want to close off the world and live in my own self created total environment around the people that make me happy. You know, these, these clowns exactly. don't know that. Yeah, th that's the thing. The chips will fall where they may, and they're just angry that their chips aren't in our bag, you know? Yeah, they, they want to be the uh, kumbaya, hug each other, and still <laughs> say nasty things about us. Yeah. I, I really feel like it's always about, uh, you know, getting that pat on the back. If they don't get the pat on the back for doing nothing, then uh, then they're they're through with it. You know, they're not doing, the Church of Satan isn't doing anything. They're not going to recognize that I'm not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, they're they're right. taking their blocks and going home because they didn't get enough good guy badges from us. <laughs> exactly. I, I saw a thing recently um, where I think one of the one, one, one of these pseudo organizations are like, the greatest gift is knowledge. And, they, you know, they're always they're always on a crusade to bring people together. And like you said, the Kumbaya community thing and they just don't get it. It's really funny. Right. Uh, well, you know, it's kind of like the whole saying of Satanism for dummies. Well, there is no Satanism for dummies because we don't tolerate them. <laughs> <in our order. laughs> well, hopefully we, uh, we hope you don't uh, encounter too much of that kind of thing this year. I, I th honestly think that uh, Lori is going to warn people ahead of time when I show up because she's paying an awful lot of money to put me up somewhere and yep. bring me down there and everything, and she doesn't want me to you know, walk off halfway through and say, yep, I'm done, you wasted your money. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, because honestly, it's embarrassing for the person holding the convention if half the guests don't want to come back. Well, as long as you get the microphone, then you can always uh, kind of turn it around on them if you if you need to. <laughs> You know, I, I tried to have uh, uh, civil decorum and be better than the people in the audience and sure. just kind of ride over them. You know, I, I try to, everywhere I go, you know, honestly try to have a little bit more polished behavior because I think that I owe it to the organization and to my own personal reputation not to be the same a-hole that the people are out there and show that, I'm superior. You know, I'm better than that. I'm not going to stoop to their level. Um, it it kind of shows what caliber of people we are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And having that that, that title, uh, you know, of Reverend, uh, being a priest of Mendes, it's that is uh, a great reminder to yourself to to uh, hold yourself in that regard. You know. Right. I mean, I'm representing many of us. I mean, I do make a point in saying that I don't speak for everyone, but I speak for the general. Uh, philosophical aspect of the organization yeah. and you know when in the public you know harm no one and you know even if someone encounters me I'm asking them politely to stop I mean that's in the book so why should I act in any uh, indifference to that absolutely awesome. uh, I'll let the I'll let the people who run the organizations browbeat them for it and <laughs> you know that's my revenge of them not being allowed to come back but I am exactly perfect <laughs> So uh, we asked this question of uh, all our guests. Um, what does Satan mean to you? Well, like I put in one of my books, uh, Satan is an archetype. He represents the defiance that we encounter on in, in daily life. Uh, it, it pushes us to excel and become the ultimate human being that we can be. I mean, obviously no one can be perfect, but... If you hold yourself to a higher standard, you're going to push to do more, to accomplish more, to gain more for yourself. And when you look back uh, on your deathbed, you'll never, you know, die and say, I wish I could have, I should have done this, because we're too busy actually doing it all the time. The only regret I'll have is that I didn't live longer to do even more. And I think uh, Satan and Satanism is the truest embodiment of that attitude awesome absolutely awesome i gotta say eric this is our don't ninth. do it john <laughs> come on let me do it <laughs> this, this is our ninth episode and that was definitely like the fourth best answer that we've heard well thank you I appreciate that. <laughs> and i didn't cheat i didn't listen to everybody else's answer and try to outdo them <laughs> no, that's awesome. <laughs> I keep hearing Christopher Walken you know, on these episodes, though. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a good, he's an interesting character, man. Have you been listening to the like the latest of what's going on with uh, him and Adam? It's really getting really yeah, personal. Yeah, I heard the last episode. That was a riot. Oh, it's crazy. So, well, listen, uh, yeah, of course, yeah. then I guess the best place to uh, check out everything that you're doing. Website-wise? Uh, CorvusNocturnum.com, right? Yes. Um, I, I, I do updates, and I check my Facebook, uh, Corvus Nocturnum. Um, I also have the author, uh, Corvus Nocturnum, on Facebook because I am quickly approaching my 5,000 limit of uh, people that I can add. So I try to cross-post on both of those pages. I have a Twitter page. Um, now, I'm not as much of a Twitter person as I am Facebook because... Like most of my books, I tend to be a little more long-winded, and when I run out of characters on Twitter, I'm like, ah, screw it, just go to my Facebook page and read the rest. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. But awesome. uh, I, I do try to keep people updated on where I'm going to be on my personal web page. If they want to get a hold of me to book me, I have two different talent agents, uh, Kimberly Oliveras, uh, Celebrity Talent Management, and uh, uh, a new one that I just added to my site under media appearances you can check that out you can also look under the tab where it uh, talks about appearances and I've listed every place that I've gone this year and uh, for next year I update that as often as I can uh, obviously I can't put every single radio interview that I do on there um, but uh, I list the the public appearances and, and uh, I try to update people on 
what the status is on Facebook of the different uh, TV shows, documentaries, the new movie that I'll be working on next year. Excellent. Can we find you on, let's say, like YouTube, things like that? Yeah, there is a YouTube page for me. I, I do copy all of that and put it directly on my personal web page so everything's all there. Uh, so you don't have to try to find me on YouTube, but you can. Great. Well, <coughs> Eric, it was great speaking to you. I, it was a real pleasure to have you on. Well, thank you. I, I really enjoyed my time with you guys. Excellent. We'll talk again soon. All right. All right. Hail Absolutely. Satan. <laughs> Hail Satan. Hail Satan. <laughs>